once they buy, else everyone's going to be too tempted. Let's do it again. One more time. Alerts are off, guys. They're off. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my build video for the Magicka Nightblade, which is, by the way, totally not my third attempt at making this video because I suck at doing an introduction. Um, yeah, so this is probably my most awaited video. I know a lot of you guys know my channel as a Magicka Nightblade. It is my main class. And because of that, I've done something different. So I'm tired of seeing this generic... Um, an honestly overrated setup that's being running around with a huge crit resist and all of that. It just doesn't get outweighed by the way the uh, sort of meta is running. So at the moment, the meta is heavily proc based. Procs are a huge percentage of your damage incoming. Um, and so what what really is the case is that your crit resist, although relevant, is actually not factoring out a huge amount of damage. So you're better off getting a base mitigation and then either looking to just be able to sustain a good survivability or put a good pressure on or of course be able to avoid damage is another way around that. So that's the sort of approach that I've taken, the ability to avoid damage. Um, so this build is a different one. The reason I'm starting this resto is some of you guys are going to be pretty critical in a sec. Um, but anyway. So the build. Our stats. First things first. Obviously we're on the wrong bar right now. Um, our spell damage is about 1.9k on the main bar. I don't want to put it on my main bar yet, otherwise I will spoil something for everyone watching. But it is 1.9k, I'll show you that in a bit if I remember. Magicka 30k health is anywhere between 25 and 26k depending. Our stamina is 14.5k. Keep in mind by the way that all these stats are on a no CP campaign. I am not on a CP campaign right now. Um, I don't do CP and in fact in this build particular I have not even played around with the CP at all because this is also my PvE and I really don't want to mess about with that stuff So there's no CP done for this build. You're gonna have to work on that yourself, but apart from that all is good So anyway stats Our crit resist 1.8k plenty. That's exactly what you need 1.8k 2k more than enough um, Even my magic K you'll notice I've traded away from the impregnable just because it doesn't make such a difference There is not that much crit damage anymore well, there is still crit damage, but most of your damage is from the procs. Um, so yeah, 1.8 more than enough. Our magic recovery then, really, really high. We are looking at 2.5k, and I have a reduced cost glyph, so our sustain is really good. And our stam recovery is 1k as well. Um, you can sort of guess what set I'm using probably as one of my sets. You will not guess the other quite as easily. Um, but yeah, there's something really, win really interesting going on with our weapon setup, so that's what we're going to go on to next. Uh, Medicinal, we are running the Atro. We are a vampire since our base recoveries are pretty high. The recovery extra we get is almost too good to miss, even though there's a lot of dawn breakers out with the stam fags running procs and all of that. Um, but it's hard to get away from that, to be honest. And yeah, remember my stats are not with Emperorship. Oh, they are with Emperorship. I don't know why that says with Emperorship. I think this campaign's bugged because that should be my health without it. Anyway, ignore that. That's not right. Um, but yeah, that's obviously completely unbuffed. You can buff that up as with your spell damage. Again, that's 1.8k on the main bar. That's down to skills. I'll show you that in a sec. So, our skills. On a back bar, we are obviously using a resto staff. This is with double take. So, surround yourself with an aura. It's a 15% dodge chance. And it gives us minor expedition. This is going to really help us move around our opponents. Alongside some of our other stuff. And, of course, it's going to give us that dodge chance. Which increases our tank ability a lot. Skill number two is Cripple, that's your bread and butter dot. I do keep that on my back bar so that I have a siphoning skill. Siphoning skill giving us the 8% magicka that the siphoning skills prop from their passives. So you want to have at least one siphoning skill. If you don't want to run that one, you could swap it with another one. Um, but yeah, you're going to want at least the siphoning skill on your back bar of your choice. Cripple is a huge dot. It's almost impossible to get that off a Magic Nightbit build. It's such a good skill. Number three, Heal Ward. This is such an important skill. Obviously, if you're a Magic Knight Blade, you already know you've got to run this. This is giving us a super large shield, and it's a good heal, and it's just bread and butter. You need that on your bar. Number four is pretty interchangeable. You could run Harness here. You could run Dampen as well if you wanted to. Um, you could run Mutagen. I'll be honest, I haven't entirely decided on there. You may see me mixing that around a lot all the time. Um, but yeah, skill number four is pretty interchangeable. So change it to whatever you find keeps your survivability higher. That's what I would make that skill a survival skill because you've got damage from other sources. Um, just make that a, a decent survivability skill and you'll be fine. And skill number five is of course fear. That's going to be a nice CC. I've always liked this on my back bar. When you get stuck on a defense, casting the heal and stuff, it's very easy to cast your fear and weapon swap into it. That's a personal preference. Again, you could swap that with another shadow skill on your front bar. Um, I wouldn't really suggest that because the shadow skills are there or you could just sacrifice the health put that on your main bar and Put entropy where mutagen is which would give you the health back on your back bar So yeah, because obviously each of our shadow skills is giving us max health if you do any nightblade cast 
Uh, ultimate then, it's hard to get away from it. It's very overpowered. Needs a hefty nerf, but we're going to run it because it's there. Is the rest of ulti. That's obviously a huge heal. Difficult to get away from that. Um, it does everything you need. I mean, you get a major protection. You're getting a big ass heal. Uh, not major protection, major four, sorry. You're getting a big ass heal. And yeah, it, it, it's nearly spammable. So really, really strong ulti there for defense. Our front bar there, a moment of truth. We'll see if anyone notices what's so weird about this build. You're going to notice it pretty quickly. Uh, we are using incapacitating strike as our ultimate. So, Blobs, why are you using incapacitating strike? That's a stamina ultimate, Tom. You're an idiot. No, I'm not. So, stamina ultimates are a completely irrelevant factor on magic builds in OCP. Your ultimates, uh, based on a few patches ago, scale on your highest pool. And your highest pool, in the case of this, is your spell damage and your magicka. We are 1.9k spell damage and 30k magicka. You could obviously get that higher again if you sacrifice some recovery. But I like the recovery. Sustained wins in this meta. So, why am I using Incapacitating Strike? It gives us a CC. Mage Defile, it's a great damage. It's spammable. It's a really good ulti. And a lot of the magic fags don't realize how good a skill this is. It's, it's still really viable. And this was down to my chat, honestly, in Twitch. A lot of these guys sort of suggested it because I was playing with some uh, different stuff, which you can probably see on my bar if you're quick to learn. And yeah, it's just, it, it, it really does what you need. I mean, it's giving you so many good buffs. It's really good. Probably needs a small nerf still, but I'll take it, you know. Siphoning attacks number five. Even with the nerf, it's not bad for sustain. Um, it's, to be honest, mostly there as a siphoning skill. I need a siphoning skill on my main bar. Otherwise, I do not get the 8% um, magicka again. So siphoning attacks is my choice. Um... I mean, the main reason I'm using that actually is for the heal over time. So the heal over time on siphoning attacks by now is actually a really good one. Whenever we light and heavy attack, we get 1,750 heal and that can crit. So that's a pretty hefty heal over time. And it's going to outweigh almost anything else for heal. So that's a really good skill. Very underestimated in terms of healing. Obviously, people like it for sustain, but I think they factor that out. It's costing us next to nothing. It's given us a good chunk of magic back. It's worth a bit of regen. Nothing like it used to be, but it's still a good skill. Then we're running Cloak. This is obviously going to give us crits from Stealth. That's going to pair very well with our main damage ability, which is Concealed Weapon in the case of this build. So we're going to be hitting them from Stealth a lot of the time. And I'm actually playing a melee Magic Blade here, and there's a few reasons for that. Mostly because I'm bored of Magicka builds, just constantly saying you have to use a Distro Staff because it's boring, it's repetitive, and I want to do something different. But also because actually against every player so far that I've fought on a Magicka Knight Blade using Resto Destro, I have beat them, and that includes every build you will ever see. Transmutation Wizard, Wizard War Maiden, uh, Scoria Overwhelming and Sir Proxalot, Necro and Proxalot, whatever they got, this build is doing really good again. So even though it's a melee based build, it actually seems to work really good in this meta of no CP. I'm just really finding it very smooth, and the movement of this build really flows very, very well, and that is largely down to skill number one. Forward Momentum. So. This is a stamina skill, and again, this is large down to my Twitch chat, though. Me and a guy called Denegor talked about this skill quite a bit a long time in the past. 33 second duration, doesn't matter. The real duration of this is the 8 seconds. All of those first things, weapon damage and health, not a relevant factor. It's a pathetic heal. But, activating this ability removes all snares and immobilizations from you and grants immunity to CC for 8 seconds. So, this allows us... Finally, to make Cloak a viable skill, because if we've got forward momentum up, we can then pop a movement speed buff or whatever. And generally what I'll do is anytime I Cloak, I recast my double take and my forward momentum so it's up before I go into a fight. Um, anytime we want to Cloak, we can still move properly. Rather than being constantly snared and all of that nonsense, you can move around and you can actually be aggressive or defensive as needed, but you can reliably get into your cloak. And that is just so important in terms of playing a magic bit at the moment. Your shields in no CP are not going to cut it alone. I have tried the highest magic build you could possibly get, Shackle, Necro, and full magic stuff on that. And honestly speaking, I think this works better. I like the ability to avoid that damage. It does take practice. Even in my case, I'm practicing this a lot at the moment. Um, I'll be playing this quite a bit on stream, trying to get the Battlegrounds achievements and all of that. And yeah, get this down and you will really, really like this skill. It's super good, but again, it takes some flow to get used to relying on Cloak a lot more than Shielding. You could again put that Shield into their Muteship, but it's not that huge, so your choice. Number three, finally, is Merciless Resolve. Bread and butter, that's gonna stack with our ulti. So when we use our ulti, we're gonna pop Merciless straight after for our burst combo. 
can get close to one-shotting. The one-shot, not as important right now. Um, yeah. I mean, the thing about no CP is sustain really factors into it. If you're in a CP environment, you could sacrifice a lot of this sustain and play more damage. If you're in a Zerg, a, a small-scale group, in other words, a Zerg, or you're in a, a duo, in other words, probably a Zerg, you could obviously factor out all of that risk covering and just go raw damage and take your spears and that sort of stuff. But yeah. Um, I see something that's worth mentioning here from my Twitch chat before I move on. They're asking why not shuffle. So I actually have this ready to morph to explain to you. The reason you don't use shuffle is even though it gives a dodge chance, it's costing twice as much. But that's not a relevant factor here. The reason you don't use shuffle is the five, uh, the final bonus there. Each piece of medium armor worn removes and grants immunity to snares and immobilizations for 0.5 seconds. 0.5 seconds? 0.5? Unless you're in a medium build, it's not worth running shuffle, guys. It's a huge loss. Well, I guess if at least not as a night blade, it doesn't make sense because that snare removal is just not relevant. 0.5 seconds. I'm more likely the single drip of my urine during a piss stream is more likely to last long, uh, uh, longer than 0.5 seconds than this, right? So it's just not useful. The duration on it is too bad, and that's why you don't go that way. Um, and that's why forward momentum is so good. So well done to my chat for that one. Our sets then, so probably a bit that most people even give a shit about. Wizards Riposte, this is both Bard, um, as is our other set. Wizards Riposte, a great set, you'll have seen it on my DK, if you do want to check that build out, if you like the Magic of DK. Um, it's giving us health, spell damage, magic recovery. When you take critical damage, you apply minor maim to your enemy for 15 seconds, reducing the damage dump by 15%. So, this is the reason that at the moment I'm not running image. In open world, you may want to run image as well instead of rapid uh, mutagen. It's a completely viable skill. It's still great for kiting, but its main use is minor maim apart from kiting. And for that reason, I've so far not used it. Again, it may find its place back on my bar, but for the time being, I'm not using it. Um, I don't know yet. We'll see. But it's a great skill in terms of, uh, sorry, a great set in terms of keeping your tankiness high in light armor. It really does help. And even with Fear putting Minor Maim on as well, it is worth having Wizards. The main reason that Wizards is so nice, by the way, is because unlike Image, it's AoE. So every target that hits you, if they crit you, they're going to get Minor Maim, which is 15% less damage. That's just huge. It's really hard to get away from that, and it's a really nice buff. So I like that one a lot. We're then using One Piece Shadow Ren. That's giving us Magic Recovery. Um, yeah, I prefer that to Spell Damage every day, as is all of our jewelry and Sustain. Again, change it as you like if you want more Spell Damage. Be my guest. It's an option there. I just like the sustain because I think sustain wins. And our final five piece then is Amoplasm. Um, it's obviously a common set. Magical spell, crit spell damage, stamina recovery, magical recovery. I'm mostly using that for the magical recovery, but to be quite frank with you. Um, yeah, I, I think the recovery wins. So, yeah. Piece it as you like. It doesn't make a huge difference. The best way to possibly piece this would be to have Wizard on the jewelry and the Amoplasm on the main pieces. But that's only going to gain you like four recovery. So who gives a shit? Just run it as you like. It doesn't make a difference. Just make sure that you're running heavy on your shadow end on either the helmet or the shoulders. Helmet will give you a bit more resistances. You could also use heavy choke form there as well. We'll do exactly the same job. Or can it if you want the spell damage, obviously. Um, you can get that on your glyphs as well. So that's all sets. Our glyphs, everything is tri-stat enchanted. Every single glyph is tri-stat enchanted. And of course, our, uh, uh, sorry, our trait is impen because you want the crit resist to a point. Our glyphs on our jewelry are reduced cost, magic recovery, magic recovery. Want more spell damage? Put more spell damage. It's your choice. It's just the build that I'm showing. Our back bar resto, we're using the weapon and spell damage. It's much more reliable to proc down there. Our front bar enchant is not quite as reliable. Front bar enchant, run whatever the hell you like. Uh, make sure your resto is defending and your front bar is sharp. I actually really like this one at the moment, which is magic and restore stamina. It helps a little bit with the forward momentum. But you could run oblivion. You could run whatever the hell you like here. It's pretty open to you, which cliff you run on there. And doesn't make a huge difference. You can even run a poison if you so prefer. Um, so... Quick disclaimer here, a lot of people are going to criticism as to why to run a two-hander. They're going to be like, Tom, Duel is so much better than two-hander. Even with four momentum, it's not worth it. Actually, two-hander and Duel give identical damage. So with the change a few packs ago, whether I run Duel or two-hander is going to give me absolutely, categorically, the same amount of spell damage and the same amount of passive damage. So I'm going to quickly show you that just to prove the case, just in case someone in the chat gets gimpy. Uh, let's pull up there real fast. One sec, one sec, one sec, one sec, one sec. Let's go to the bank and grab two jewel pieces that aren't setted, just to give us an example. Obviously, you can see by the way that when I take that off, I'm not losing a spell damage bonus, right? The five piece is crit, so just pointing that out, it's the same. So I'm going to grab a jeweled. We're going to grab a random sword and a random sword, just to make sure the stats are the same. So we've got a blood fawn and an impreg. They're both swords. 
exactly the same stuff, right? So, with the Razor Riposte Greatsword on, if it goes on the right bar, of course, keeps happening to me today, we are on a character sheet spell damage of 1915. If I put two swords on there, my character street will go to 1916, probably. There you go, 1916. It makes no difference at all. The next thing people can say is, oh, you're lying, Blobs. You get the passive spell damage or damage increase from your swords on Jeweled, though. So, if you say so. So, let's go on Jeweled. Jeweled, Twin Blade and Blunt. Each sword increases your damage done by 2.5%. Fantastic, you're right, but you're not. Because when I go on Two Ender and go on to this passive here... Each sword increases your damage done by 5%. It's the same business. So you see, running a two-ender a jeweled in this patch as a magic class actually makes no difference apart from the extra set piece. And that is something that people don't understand because it has changed with the patch and a lot of people don't realize that that change was there. The jeweled got nerfed slightly by a couple of percent. And thus, two-ender is identical to it. It makes no difference. So yeah, that's why it's worth going with the two-ender especially. Um, our food then is going to be try food. You do want to run that one. It's worth the health. It's worth the survivability. It's worth everything that you could possibly want. It does the job fine. Um, I've tried all sorts of other food. This one you want to run. And at the moment, my potion preference is actually going to be this one here. So this is Essence of Detection. It gives us spell power, sorcery, and magicka. I think this is Wormwood, Col uh, Wormwood, Cornflower, and Columbine. But don't quote me on that. I could be wrong. Um. I'm sure you can find out with some add-ons. There's loads of add-ons out there, or your friends, of course. If you choose to run Entropy instead of Rapid Regen, again, that's a changeable slot. You could obviously go with Tripods. I still like the Detection. When you go Open Worlds, at the moment, because of the amount of procs, like 90% of people, literally 90% of people in Open World are just proc blades. So Detection is a very powerful asset to have. And honestly, I've almost nearly run Mark Target here as well, because it's really tiring having that on you constantly. Um, it's not more for the moment, but it could well find its way back on my bar. I don't know yet. But yeah, I think I have covered everything here. I, I think so. Like I said, champion points, I'm afraid you're going to have to do it yourselves. Um, I haven't really touched it. What I would suggest is take the framework of my Sork and my Magic Decay, which are min-maxed, and just look at which CP passives are useless for the class. So for example, the Sork, everything should be good. But if you find out that you're, I don't know, putting points into crit damage that are low, maybe put some more in since you guaranteed it from yourself. Or if you've put, got points in shield and you're running shield, take them out. But the Sork general framework should be good. A lot of those points are going to be the same. Things like CC break, resistance is all that. Copy those to the point. They're absolutely min-maxed and just sort out the rest of the points as you prefer. Um, yeah. So I think that covers everything. Again, change things as you like, guys. Every time I get criticism like, your spell damage is shit, your recovery is way too much. That's great. Change it to your preference. You don't have to copy a build for what it is, guys. Run a build that you want. I post my builds for those guys who don't have it provided. It's out of my own choice, and I hope it helps them. I post it so that people see an example of what I'm running, but doesn't mean you have to run it. So change things as you prefer. But I'm telling you right now, sustain is really good in NoCP, and it's always going to outweigh, in my opinion. But yeah, I've covered everything. Good luck. Again, this is focused on NoCP and Battlegrounds, but it should work in CP just fine if you get the CP right. And... Uh, I'll see you out there. Best of luck with the build and good luck finding the pieces. There we go. Build video complete. So guys, I am going to be ending my evening stream there. I've been streaming for